Hello! I'm gonna finish doing my makeup while I talk to you guys, but I'm actually so excited for today's video. I've had this video idea for a really long time, ever since I saw Jack Edwards do this video, so shout out to him for this video idea, and yeah, it just sounds so fun. Basically, I feel like I just read so many popular books, like if I hear other booktubers recommend a book, I will read it eventually, and so far that's worked out for me, but I really want to read like some unknown books that I may not normally pick up, or maybe that I just haven't heard of on the internet but are probably incredible so i've been really wanting to do a video where i buy books solely based on their cover you know this isn't always a good indication but i feel like if an author and their team put a lot of effort into a cover hopefully that means they put a lot of effort into writing an incredible book and covers are definitely one of the first things that attract me to a book so we're going to be going to Barnes and nobles and i'm just going to walk around see what covers attract my attention i'm not going to read the back of the book i'm not going to look up the book at all it cannot be a book that I've ever heard of so we're solely going based on the cover and nothing else but yeah this is basically just going to be a book shopping plus a book haul of buying books solely based on their cover and not knowing anything else about them and then lastly to get ready I'm going to put on some perfume I just got three perfumes from Sunbird look how cute these little cases are and Sunbird is actually the sponsor of today's video they are a monthly perfume subscription box you go on their website you pick the scent you want and then each bottle has around 120 sprays which will last you until they deliver the next perfume to your doorstep and then the way that you spray these perfumes is you just twist and the sprayer pops up like i don't know why i just think that is so cool and then you can pull the vial out and see that is a lot of perfume and the three fragrances i got the first one is aqua de parma uzu i haven't even sprayed this perfume yet but i can just smell it in the bottle and it smells so good then the second perfume i got is chow vince camuto and i'm probably honestly totally butchering these names but like you want a perfume with a name that you can't pronounce that's how you feel fancy and the third one i got is english laundry abbey and i just love the name english laundry it has style and grace and exudes femininity which i love okay i think i'm gonna go with the second one for my perfume for today that smells so good wait i love that oh my gosh i just think it's so fun that you can mix up your perfume every single month if you want to or get the same perfume every month if that's your thing and they also have a quiz so you can find your scent you can use my code to get 55 percent off your first month which will be in the description of this video okay i got my tote bag and let's head to the bookstore All right, I just got to Barnes & Noble. My strategy, um, I think I'm gonna hit up the book talk table first for sure. I definitely trust book talk and the Rex. I'm just gonna see if there's any books I've never heard of before that have cool covers. I feel like I've heard of pretty much all book talk books, so I'm not really relying on getting anything from the book talk table. And then I think I'm just gonna wander around. Definitely gonna check out the YA section. I love mystery and thriller books. Also definitely gonna check out the romance section. And I'm kind of hesitant to check out the fiction section. I'm just scared that I'm gonna end up getting like a literary fiction book, which I've never read literary fiction and I don't know if it's gonna be my thing, but I feel like literary fiction books always have cool covers. We'll see, maybe it'll be good to get something out of my comfort zone. Okay, let's go inside. First up, the book talk table. This cover is so gorgeous, Dance of Thieves. I'm guessing based on the cover that it's fantasy, but not sure. I also thought this book had the coolest cover ever. I feel like all fantasy books just have the coolest covers. Unrelated to cool covers, but I'm so happy Allie Hazelwood has her own table at Barnes & Nobles. I still need to read Love on the Brain. This book, the cover itself isn't that interesting, but the road is like 3D metallic. That is just, it's so cool. The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, not the coolest cover, but the title, so, so, so intriguing. This cover, ah, I think it's so pretty. I love the black and white. Now this one, opposite, not black and white, but so much color, which I love. Now here's rapid fire of some cool covers. There are so many Taylor Jenkins Reid books I haven't read. Not going to get any in this video because I've heard of Taylor Jenkins Reid and I'm picking books that I don't know, but definitely need to read more books by her. Only men carry the virus. Only women can save us all. I don't think I'm supposed to read the tagline because I'm only judging based on the cover, but what an interesting concept and a cool cover. Then I headed to the YA section and this book, stunning. Look at the detail. And then some other books, Rapid Fire, that I thought looked cool in the YA section and the fiction section. This one also looked so interesting. I almost got this book, but it kind of looked like historical fiction and I'm not sure if I love historical fiction or not. But yeah, I ended up getting some books, which I will tell you about in three, two, one. I got five books. I was planning to get like two or three and I really got five. 
like my bank account is like what are you doing girl but i'm really excited these books look good hopefully they actually are good and are things that i'm interested in i'm nervous i'm so nervous like what if these books are awful i don't know i have no idea anyway i'm gonna drive home and then i'll show you guys all the book covers and we'll read the backs of the books look them up on goodreads get all the info to see if i made a good purchase I just got back. It's time to look at the books and read the summaries. The first book that I got is A Touch of Darkness. I think this cover is absolutely stunning. I also think the title is cool, A Touch of Darkness. I was thinking when I was in the bookstore that I was trying to go just based on the cover and not based on like the title or the tagline or anything else. And I think it'd be fun to do the same video concept again, but go just based on the title. I don't know, let me know if you guys think that would be a fun idea. This was on the book talk table and I've absolutely never heard of it, never seen it anywhere. I'm hoping since it was on the book talk table that it's really good. It's giving fantasy vibes. Okay, I'm gonna read the summary now. Oh, I'm nervous. Persephone, how do I say that? Persephone. Persephone, not Persephone. Okay, Persephone is the goddess of spring and title only. Since she was a little girl, flowers have only shriveled at her touch. Okay, that's kind of cool. I'm curious if that's why we have all the flowers on the cover, I bet. After moving to New Athens, she hoped to lead an unassuming life disguised as a mortal journalist. All of that changes when she sits down in a forbidden nightclub to play a hand of cards with a hypnotic and mysterious stranger. Hades, god of the dead, has built a gambling empire in the mortal world, and his favorite bets are rumored to be impossible. But nothing has ever intrigued him as much as the goddess offering him a bargain he can't resist. Interesting, okay. The only mythology book I've ever read is The Song of Achilles, so it sounds like this is another mythology book. Wait, I'm actually excited. Okay, there's one more paragraph in the summary and then I'll tell you more of my thoughts. After her encounter with Hades, Persephone finds herself in a contract with the God of the Dead and his terms are impossible. Persephone must create life in the underworld or lose her freedom forever. The bet does more than expose Persephone's failure as a goddess, however. As she struggles to sow the seeds of her freedom, love for the God of the Dead grows. A love that is both captivating and forbidden? Wait, what? Okay, so Persephone has to go to the underworld and like make life grow like flowers and seeds and stuff, which sounds impossible because it's literally the underworld, like the land of the dead. And she's starting to fall for Hades. So we have, oh wait, that makes me so happy, a fantasy romance between the god of flowers and the god of dead. That feels like the most like, forbidden, like would never in a billion years happen romance. I'm gonna look it up on Goodreads because I'm curious what the overall rating is. It has 3.86 stars, which I feel like isn't incredible, incredible, but that's pretty good. Barnes & Noble always has buy one, get one 50% off. And I thought it'd be fun to get two bucks from the buy one, get one 50% off deal since we're kind of like taking a chance on books. Might as well get them on sale. So I got two books. If he had been with me and the cheerleaders and both of these books aren't like the most extravagant intricate covers like a touch of darkness they're both very minimal and i really like the minimal cover look like if he had been with me we've got like this heart lollipop and then it's crushed on the other side and it just feels like so dramatic and cool i couldn't tell if it's gonna be like a murder mystery or romance or what autumn and finn used to be inseparable but then something changed or they changed now they do their best to ignore each other. Autumn has her boyfriend, Jamie, and her close-knit group of friends. Finn has become that boy at school, the one everyone wants to be around. Okay, Finn got popular. That still doesn't stop the way Autumn feels every time she and Finn cross paths, and the growing nagging thought that maybe things could have been different, maybe they should be together. And as time passes, Autumn realizes she might not get another chance to make things right before it's too late. Okay, so that sounds kind of like a straight up romance from the dark cover. I was hoping we would have some like darker elements to it. It has 4.08 stars on Goodreads, which I feel like is really good. I don't know about this one, to be honest. I really like the cover. It sounds like it's got really good reviews on Goodreads, but the story just like the plot summary just isn't really giving me that much. Then I got the cheerleaders, which definitely looks like murder mystery to me, at least with like the blood. And I just, I love the font too. And like the simplicity of like the skirt. Ooh, what a good first sentence. There are no more cheerleaders in the town of Sunnybrook. First, there was a car accident. Not long after the murders happened, Monica's sister was the last cheerleader to die. After her suicide, Sunnybrook High disbanded the cheer squad. No one wanted to be reminded of what happened. That was five years ago. Only Monica's world is starting to unravel. There are the letters in her dad, stepdad's desk, 
an unearthed years old cell phone, a strange new friend at school. Whatever happened five years ago isn't over. Some people in town know more than they're saying and somehow Monica is at the center of it all. There are no more cheerleaders in Sunnybrook, but that doesn't mean anyone else is safe. Ooh, okay. So it sounds like all the cheerleaders died by seemingly accidental deaths or by taking their own life, but there's more to the mystery. I love, love, love me a good YA murder mystery. Assuming that it's murder, I don't even know like what is the cause of all these deaths. Okay, it has 3.79 stars on Goodreads, which isn't bad. It looks like people are saying overall it's okay, but I'm still intrigued. I feel like you just like really can't go wrong with a YA mystery. Okay, then also in the YA section, I got Pride and Premeditation, and I really debated whether or not I should get this book. I think the cover is so, so pretty. It's just, it's so cool. I wasn't sure if it was a little bit like cheating to get this book because Pride and Prejudice is so popular, and although I haven't read the summary, I'm assuming Pride and Premeditation is like a murder mystery spoof on Pride and Prejudice, but I have not read Pride and Prejudice and I have not seen the movies and I really don't know anything about the actual original Pride and Prejudice, so I still feel like I'm going into this completely blind. 17 year old aspiring law student Lizzie Bennett and young fledging lawyer Mr. Fitzwilliam Darcy go head to head in a murder case that has shocked London high society. Ooh, I love that we've got a law student female lead. But as the case and her feelings for Darcy become more complicated, Lizzie discovers that her dream career could make her happy, but it might also get her killed. I feel like that's like a really fun and interesting combo to have a law student, a lawyer, and a murderer. 3.78 stars, why do all these books keep being like around 3.8 stars? I want these to be like in the four stars. Okay, a lot of people are saying that they really adore this book though, so that's a good sign. People are saying the book is really fun. Someone said it's a great cozy mystery, which fall is coming up, so I feel like a cozy mystery is perfect. I'm curious if I should read Pride and Prejudice first, if that would make this this book more meaningful. If anyone has read this book, let me know if I should read the original first or not. And then lastly, book number five, I got Dream On. I don't know, I was looking at the romance books and most of them have like a very cute, adorable, like animated kind of covers, which isn't like the most stunning covers to me in the way that fantasy book covers are really stunning. But as far as romance books go, I thought this one was a really cute cover and I loved the colors and I wanted to get one romance book with a cover that I loved. Let's read the summary. When law grad, okay, we've got another law student character. When law grad Cass Walker wakes up after surviving a car accident, she is flooded with memories of a man named Devin. The only problem, Devin, as confirmed by family, friends, and doctors, doesn't exist. Everything about him from his coffee brown eyes to the slightly crooked angle of his pinky to his high wattage charm is a figment of Cass's coma adult imagination. Still, she can't get him out of her head. Interesting. Okay, I feel like so far I haven't heard of any book with a plot similar to this one. So when she happens upon the real Devin a year later in Cleveland flower shop, she's completely shocked. Even more surprising is that Devin actually believes her story. And despite his protective older brother's doubts, they soon embark on a real life romance. With her dream man by her side and a new job at a prestigious law firm, Cass's future seems perfect, but fate might have other plans. Wait, whoa, that is so interesting. I'm assuming Devin doesn't remember her, like that her coma brain made him up, but he is a real person or does he remember her? Is any of it real or was it all in her head in the coma? This is cool because it's a romance, but it's got a little mystery element. Okay, it has 3.64 stars on Goodreads. Again, which was a little higher. Well, cool, yay. I feel like I got a really good variety of books. Let me know if any of you guys have read any of these books and if they're good, like which one should I read first? Did I make good choices? Did I not make good choices? I wish I could also have read all the books in this video, but I am a slow reader. Like I normally read around seven-ish books a month. So it would take me almost a month to read all of these books, but I do want to read them all eventually. And I will definitely update you guys on Goodreads and Instagram whenever I read these books. And wow, this was so cool. Let me know if you guys like this video. Oh, if you want me to do another one where I buy based on book covers again, or I potentially buy based just on the title. And if I buy less books next time, I could also maybe read all the books in the video as well. And with that, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.